In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by DinoTech by Dino Dynamics. For your nearest workshop, visit our website. And with the support of the Ramada Resort, Phillip Island. <laughs> The Australian Auto Aftermarket Expo is the major showcase for the Australian aftermarket accessory industry. Held once every two years, the 2013 Expo was held in Sydney at the Sydney Convention and Exhibition Centre at Darling Harbour. Stuart Charity is the Executive Director of the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association. Well Stuart, another Australian Automotive Aftermarket Expo, uh, tell us about this year, how's it all come together? Look, it's come together fantastically well. Uh, I think uh, every uh, we hold this event every two years, and uh, each time uh, our exhibitors uh, step it up a notch. And, and this one is uh, our best-looking show by far. Uh, we've got five acres of floor space here, uh, 370 exhibitors, and uh, and the the visitors are just streaming through. So uh, we're expecting uh, probably our best ever show in Sydney. A lot of people would be surprised at that. I mean, we've seen the Melbourne and Sydney motor shows cancelled due to so-called lack of interest. Everyone says the economy is down in the gutter somewhere, and yet it all seems to be very positive out here. Yeah, look, uh, there's a real buzz around the place, and uh, you know the automotive aftermarket just keeps on keeping on. It's it's growing, um, it's innovating, and uh, our show globally does uh, business around these sorts of trade shows. Whilst uh, you know, the electronic communication's great and, and there's uh, a lot of business streamlining and so on. Nothing beats that face-to-face -face communication, being able to bring in all your technical specialists into one spot and have the customers come to you is a real um, advantage for, for many companies. How much does the aftermarket industry make in terms of a contribution to Australian industry? Well, in terms of the uh, the automotive parts and accessory sector, we estimated it at around $11 billion. But if you look at the the entire repair and maintenance and parts, uh, you're looking at $34 billion a year. So it's a massive industry. We've seen just recently the decision by Holden to wax 500 jobs. There is considerable doubt over the future of the Falcon and whether Ford will actually manufacture in Australia as all. Well. Should Ford con discontinue manufacturing, even if Holden discontinue the manufacturing, does that make this sector of the industry even more important for Australian industry? Well, it certainly does. I guess the first thing's first. Uh, I, I don't think uh, we, we should be... Um, saying that we, we shouldn't have a manufacturing industry, uh, a car manufacturing industry, uh, that, that is really important um, and, and, and it underpins a lot of the other activity. Having said that, um, I don't also don't think it should just be an open checkbook and just uh, pouring good money after bad money either. But uh, um, one of our real bugbears is there's, there's a real lack of appreciation and awareness at a government level of, of the contribution of aftermarket manufacturing. I mean, we uh, have over 300 manufacturers, most of them don't uh, supply to the car industry, they, they supply through the independent aftermarket and they export $800 million a year worth of Australian made product all over the world and that message is not understood by government. What about the high performance and motorsport aspect of the, uh, of the industry? We see people here uh, who are very heavily involved in international motorsport, companies like, uh, well, like Motec in Australia, Yellow Terra, Harrop Engineering, Hollinger, all of those companies are as well known outside of Australia as they are here. Yeah. How important is that uh, that whole sector of the industry to the health of the industry overall? Look, it, it's a, a critical sector, and um, where Australian manufacturing is really strong is in in the high value add, the sort of components where there's um, uh, where you're buying on product features, on performance, and, and so on, not on, not necessarily on price. And um, those sort of companies that you, you listed before, they're exporting. Australian made product to the, the heartland of, of motorsport in, in the US and in, in Europe and the UK um, and they're, they're internationally recognised. I mean Motec is, is, a, is based in Melbourne, does all its manufacturing and R&D in Australia but exports 90% of their product internationally. As far as uh, you've got a lot of international people here as well, you, you're sort of you're trying to export products, and you've got uh, people from China and Thailand, the United States. They're all here trying to bring their products into Australia. I mean, how does that all work? I mean, the sort of the, the balance between you guys trying to sell to them and them trying to sell to us. Look, it is a delicate balance. Um, look, let's face it; it is a global industry, and uh, a lot of the, particularly replacement parts, uh, are now manufactured in, in, in China and in, in India and Thailand and so on. So we can't ignore that. But having said that, um, 
if you went to any aftermarket trade show around the world, the percentage of international exhibitors uh, would be far, far higher. Some of those shows have 60, 70 or 80 percent of their exhibitors would be Chinese or Asian um, manufacturers. We've got about 7 percent of our floor space. And the other thing I'd say is that um, Whilst our members manufacture, um, other members also, we, we represent the entire supply chain. So we have importers and distributors um, and we need to cater for their needs as well. So it is a, it is a delicate balance and um, we're sort of damned if we do and damned if we don't. You mentioned the contribution that the high performance sector of the industry makes. There seems to be a push at the moment, particularly from government, to, uh, to try and limit the, uh, the ability of people out on the, the road to modify their cars, to improve their cars, to make improvements, whether it's putting on a, a new set of wheels or lowering the suspension, making the cars better, safer. For some reason they're against that. Is this a worrying trend and is this something your organisation is uh, actively trying to uh, lobby governments uh, on behalf of the, that sector of the industry? Yes, yeah, certainly it's a worrying trend. We've just uh, finished a walk through the show with the entire management of uh, the, the Road and Maritime Services uh, in New South Wales, which is the old RTA. Um, and we are doing a lot of education about um, the fact that uh, what our industry does um, is, is very safe. We do testing to the, the highest standards. We are as, as safety conscious as the vehicle manufacturers and, and we want to do the right thing. Um, the simple fact is that people modify vehicles, they need to modify vehicles and they're going to continue modifying vehicles. So the vehicle standards regulators need to be able to accommodate that and they need to give industry some guidance on, on how to go about that. We're happy to provide input. We uh, sit on a range of steering committees and we're, um, we have quite good relationships with most of the uh, state regulators. Some of them uh, don't uh, consult with us as much as we'd like. Um, but uh, I guess a lot of the, where a lot of the concern is coming from is the rapid advances in vehicle technology and we do need to make sure that, um, the, uh, that, that our processes, our testing uh, and our design uh, keep pace with the changes in vehicle technology. So if viewers of Inpit Lane want any more information about the Australian Aftermarket Automotive Association, uh, where do they go? What website? Okay, it's uh, www.aaa.com.au. OK, well, it's a, it's, it's a great uh, expo once again. Next one, I take it, two years' time in Melbourne? Two years' time in Melbourne. It'll be April 2015, and uh, it'll be bigger and better again. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back here uh, doing it all over again. Well, Stuart Charity, once again, thank you for joining us in Pit Lane. Thank you very much, Brett. Why should you get your car tuned with a Dynotech Dyno? Your car will be more fuel efficient. An accurate tune means saving money at the pump. Your car is safe. It never has to leave the workshop to be tested. Increased performance. Optimise fuel consumption and more power. Reduced emissions. Protect the environment by minimising your carbon footprint. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to www.dino.com.au. Dynotech by Dino Dynamics.